Welcome back to the manor. Julian McBain here, and we are back hunting Kerberos. At least until July 9th. Gotta wait for everything to load in here. So, that's right. They have finally announced the absolute date for, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Migration. That's the term I'm looking for. They've just released the date for migration. I'm excited. But in the meantime, we have plenty of curbs to hunt to try and work on that particular codex mission. Just posting this uh, live stream out. I'm a few minutes late. I apologize for that. Uh, internet connection has been giving me trouble, so if I suddenly cut out, that's why. One thing about having to manage multiple social media sites is you gotta go to all of them. I wish I could just like hit a button. And just have it post to all of them. But we don't have that luxury. Okay. I'm done being boring. We're going to kind of move a little bit farther away from the sweating area. For those of you watching the replay, if you're new to the channel, while welcome to the manor. Please take a moment and subscribe down below. We are on the road to 13 million subscribers, one subscription at a time, so make sure you subscribe. Okay, what's that we do this evening? Whoops, better than them. That's no good. I'm actually really looking for, well, I always look forward to migration. It's a fun time. Um, but like last year, because of the, they announced retiring the iron missions just as migration was getting into full swing. And so I barreled through one of the iron missions thinking, cause they originally planned on cutting them off after just a month. And then they said, oh, by the way, it's going to be a whole year. Well, I had abandoned essentially the iron mission I was working on. I didn't abandon, abandon it, but it, I stopped working on it. And I actually probably would have had enough time to finish the one last uh, long tooth iron mission, except I abandoned it because I thought it wasn't going. I wasn't going to finish it in the month because the migration wasn't going to last that long. So that's sad, Panda me. But that's okay. We're going to hammer on the Codex mission through migration. Tell Scotty C93 have almost caught up to one subscribers too. He passed me. Which you know, good for him. Oh, big news came today too. Non entropy news, those who watch my channel for you know things other than entropia. Today Steam announced that they are going to be releasing a PC port. Of Horizon Zero Dawn, and I'm freaking excited. I don't know if I'm going to do a live stream of that or if I'm going to do a let's play of that, but I'm excited for that game. I'll figure that out. Yeah. the The unfortunate part of that is it will not be blind because because it was a PS4 exclusive. I never thought I'd get a chance to play it, so I watched Christopher Odds playthrough. He's one of my favorite YouTubers. You should go check out his channel. He's been doing it since like 2012. And I started watching his channel when he was only like four, six months in. 
think I started watching his channel. He only had 4,000 subscribers. And now he's got like 400,000. Um. But yeah, no, I watched the whole playthrough there and it was great. And now I'm looking forward to the opportunity to actually play myself. Because just the whole premise is awesome. And a bit terrifying. Lag. Come on. Come back. Come back here. Thank you. I don't know what's with my internet connection tonight, guys. We had a storm earlier. I have the feeling they might have damaged one of the lines. It might not be coming from, you know... They might have had to reroute the, the bandwidth. Well, they wouldn't have to reroute it. It would just automatically reroute, but you know what I mean. The shortest line to me is no longer available, so therefore it's going around a different... We almost lost power. I was like, crap, I'm going to have to figure out how to remember... I'm going to have to remember how to turn on the damn generator. make it a point to try and find some Kerberos on a Menthra, maybe in one of the OLAs. Mostly because I always end up logging in and it's nighttime. And I know it's because of the fixed day night cycle and Entropia, I get it. But I know it's less visually pleasing than seeing hunts during the day. That's not good. Two level sixes and I'm not wearing armor. This could get interesting fast. And yes, I'm deliberately not wearing armor. I'm trying to keep my decay down. Which if I have to heal a lot, it kind of counteracts the desire to not have all that decay. So who we got in tonight? I see we got three people watching. One of them is my second laptop, so I know there's probably two actual people. Say something in chat. Say hi. What are you guys up to today? Hopefully the hunting gets a little bit better than this. Hey, cat. Yeah, I think I love this game to death, but let's be facing it. Borderlands 2 is far more exciting. <laughs> but it's a good time to be had. It is absolutely a good time to be had. 
the thing about the thing that I think excites me about this is that it's you get, you get the loots and sometimes you get the globals and that that makes the adrenaline pump. But I like this game because it's chill. Try not to get in the way of other hunters. Yeah, they are. Um, you know, I've got this irritating bug in my room. And he won't stand still long enough for me to get him outside. Speaking of outside, I was really happy I got to people today for the first time since quarantine started. Like, honestly, people. It was nice to be able to hang out with friends. Um, it, it really, like, you don't realize just how much you miss people until, you know, you're, you're back with them. Like I got to, to see my t um, my two fencing students, and um, so like it was Cat and Kenrick who are here um, in chat with us, and then another person Sage and their so Sasha, and it was just amazing to be able to just hang out with people, and. Um, and of course we stabbed each other. Because that's what friends are for. But but just to be able to hang out and chat in person. Like not on a Zoom call. I just... It didn't occur to me how much I missed it. Until I was there. And I was like, wow, I really missed this. You know, and of course we had to reasonably practice social distancing you know no hugs or anything like that sad panda but it was really nice i'll be very happy when this quarantine is over i think we all will be life goes back to normal And the, the, I think the irony of the whole thing, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to life going back to normal. For years, my it was almost a motto, you know, why do you want normal? Well, right now, I want some normal. Uh, I don't, I don't seek average, but at the same time, it's just like, just, just give me a normal week, you know. Where I get to actually meet with people in person. Where I get to... You know, I don't eat at restaurants very often. Mostly because it's expensive. We don't have a big variety of food here either. Um, in central Vermont. But... But just to be able to go out. 
Not that I was one to really do that a lot, but it, there's a difference between deciding not to and then just not being able to. You know what I'm saying? And I get it. There's a there's a pandemic going on. I'm not saying that we're not doing the right things. I'm just saying that it wears. No, we are social creatures. And as introverted as I am, I will be the first to admit I really enjoyed being around people. I think that's... That's a motivating factor for us, you know? We we all have the things that we do all of the work we do for. And one of the things that I do all the work I do is so that I can take time and do things like fence, spend time with friends, you know, take a break from life. Because as much as I grind, and I do, I grind a lot. I grind at my nine to five, I grind for the channel. I pump out content for the website. Speaking of which, I need to do write an article tomorrow. Being able to do the fun things like fence, spend time with my son, spend time with my friends. Eventually go back to events again. That's the purpose of the grind. To be able to have that time And I'm sure there are some of you out there going, well, why do you pump out all this content if you're looking for more time? Because, you know, it's it's a lot of work pumping, pumping out content and curating it and figuring out what you're going to do. And it does. It does take a lot of time. For every 30-minute for every video, I probably spend another 30 minutes of other production, whether it's uploading or tagging or figuring out what I'm going to say, thumbnail making, planning, you know... And sometimes you get bad videos. And I'm just us talking bad commentary. I'm like, oh, the mic failed. Those are my favorite. It's like, oh, I just spent the last half hour talking to myself. <laughs> um, but there's a lot of work that goes into it. And I probably spend a solid nine hour work day's worth of time every week on this, just on the channel. Just on this channel. And that does not include the live streams. Now, I, should, I live stream three hours each week too. An hour and a half on Tuesday and an hour and a half on Friday. So call it 12 hours a week. And and I'm not bitching. I do this on purpose. I One, because I enjoy it. Right? And two, because I have given myself the mission of making partner. And then after that, getting up to 13 million subscribers. And you know what? I know, 13 million is an out there number. It's ridiculous. It's absurd. It's huge. Who could... You're talking about an outlier. Like a, a, a someone in the top 1% of YouTubers would have something like 13 million subscribers. But I aim for it because it's so difficult to attain. If I only wanted 1,000 subscribers, why would I put all the effort for it? But I don't want a thousand subscribers. I want 13 million subscribers. Do I think I will become a full time content creator? Probably not. I'm not sure it'll ever get large enough to get there. I want it to get to that point. I want to be able to choose. Doing this, grinding now, getting to that point. Being able to make the money is about the freedom that it grants. I want the freedom to choose how I use my time. And so to have freedom later, I am sacrificing time now. Because I know that the, that investment of time, that return on time invested will pay off. I don't know how much time it's going to take. It could take me 10 years. 
but that's okay. That's not the point. The point is I'm putting the effort forth. That's why I'm live streaming on the 3rd of July when most people are probably out partying. I'm like, wow, there's only four people in here. That's unusual for an Entropia stream. Oh, yeah. I know the majority of my viewers are from the United States, although I know I've got people from other countries that watch. Um, Scotty, for instance, is from Oz. Which was kind of funny because he he was on in chat last Scotty C93. You should go subscribe to his channel if you're not. Um, help him keep his lead on me. Um, he came to to my chat on Tuesday, and I had been in his chat on Monday, so we kind of crashed each other's live streams. Which I think it's it's always fun to be able to do that with each other. You know, jump into each other's live streams and just you know you chit chat. I've got to say, the Entropia content creation community is probably one of the best. And, like, I've I've been to the esports community, and there are a lot of good people there, but there's also a lot of toxicity. And being able to know... And, and part of it's because it's, it's like any sport, right? You get into the big sports, you're going to have a lot of good people, but between some of them, there's going to be toxicity. And it's probably because their personalities just don't mesh right and if you have a large enough community of anything you're going to run into toxic people overall but really it's just when two personalities don't mesh they end up getting into arguments and it creates kind of a more toxic environment and i'm not downing the esports community at all there are a lot of amazing people in that community but no not but and when i despite that when i compare it to the entropia content creation community it's a much different environment and it's probably because the majority of us are older you know most of your esports players i guess you could call them athletes but i'm not sure if that's really the right term for it tend to be younger often between 15 and 21 whereas eu players tend to be late 20s early 30s um heck there's one person who's on my friends list who th this is his retirement you know Just can't move around so great anymore so he plays in tropia universe which i think is awesome that he has found a platform that he can enjoy those years when he's not doing the real life thing it's not bad and I know I didn't start with this I started with some I'm gonna have to do like a controlled cost hunt on live stream. Maybe I'll do that Tuesday. I planned on doing it today, and I, because of all of the challenges just to make the stream work, I didn't think to set it up. But um, I will do my best to remember to do a controlled cost live stream for Tuesday. Because I think it would be really interesting to find out what our profit to loss ratio is. Especially since I'm hunting with no armor. Which means that a lot of the... Um, the expense, the decay associated with hunting is no longer present. And usually I only do that with really low level stuff. Like when I'm hunting the drones. I'll go sans armor. And eventually I'll have to, you know, heal up. And that's, that's just kind of a fact of life. But at the same time... 
I think it provides for um, it'd be an interesting to see just what the difference is profit to loss wise because if by hunting without armor I'm making just a touch of profit and then I go and I sell stuff on the auction house for markup then all of that's going to be better in the long run And it's going to be worth the, the higher challenges. My one concern is once this pistol runs out, I ain't got nothing to replace it. we got about 2,800 shots left, though. That's good stuff. I got to admit, I like Entropian Knights. Because it's always as it, you've always got the full double moon, so it's really, really bright, and my skull mask basically glows in the dark. And I mean, what's cooler than a glow in the dark skull mask that isn't green? Yeah, the loot seems to be fairly typical for curbs. I went through the entire iron emission chain for these guys. The whole thing. It was one of only two that I did the whole chain. I did the whole Punies chain. I did the whole Kerberos chain. Front to back. Whoa. And here I am doing it again. But that's okay because... Once this one's over, it gets repeatable. We move on, like we do with the berry flood. Speaking of which, do I have an unclaimed? I do have an unclaimed reward. Ooh. Um. We'll go dexterity again. one more and then I gotta do the fatherhood thing so I'll be back in a sec okay good he's doing what he's supposed to He's backing me straight into his mate. So this one I'll have to tow it. You know, I'm excited to see what mind art comes out with next because they've got competition coming so they're gonna have to evolve and I think mind art will evolve it's just a matter of how long will it take them and what will they do
And so I'm really curious to see. And I mean, the, the first thing that they have done is that with all of the updates, they're making it easier to play on a wider range of platforms. I.e., I think they're going to be coming out with a mobile version. I think they're going to port it to Android. There's already a couple of successful emulators on Android. Uh, to, a, to, a, to a certain extent, at least, from what I understand. I've never played them myself, full disclosure, but... There are people who claim to be playing them on Android, and I have no reason to disbelieve them. I think that that's excellent, but I think that an official port would definitely be good. And so I'm looking forward to seeing what Mindark does there, because I think that this game would be on... would I know for a fact that this game would work on most of the higher level phones, like your Samsung Galaxy S10s, your iPhone 10, your um, your Razer phone, your Pixel 4, the, the really high-end phones with the Snapdragon 845. I have no reason to believe that this wouldn't that this wouldn't run on it perfectly. You know, maybe maybe it'll be at a lower graphical resolution, although not on the Razer phone. That thing has the graph the uh, phone equivalent of a freaking 10 1080. It's ridiculous. Speaking of 1080s, I was doing a cybersecurity training, and it was going through, you know, password length complexity, how many seconds, how much time does it take to crack it, right? And, you know, thankfully by the time anyone managed to crack any of my passwords with its complexity, it'd be like seven years, good luck. But the example they used is they use a 1080 graphics card, a GeForce 1080 graphics card to run the cracking program. It's like global, ooh, 40 ped, nice. Are, are graphics cards becoming the, the universal form of processing shit fast? I mean, I know GPUs have dedicated memory, and that's awesome. They've got a dedicated processor, and that's awesome, too. But, like, 1080s were almost impossible to find for the first two years they were out because all the miners were picking them up for mining Bitcoin. And now come to find out hackers use them break into systems. Oh, looks like, like my uh, loot pill ran out. Blah, 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 blah. Can't talk. I was just that just blew my mind completely blew my mind now I got spoiled to loot pills I've got nine more might actually end up having to spend the pet on them out of the TT I got lazy, folks. Oh. Grab the loot on the way by. Searching, I'm not coming up in the search results for Entropia Universe. That's sad. That's okay. Hey, Alex. Good to see you. I was just talking about um, how, speculating on whether Mindark was going to eventually port this over to mobile, and then I was talking about my shock that GPUs are being used as uh, to process hacking. Like, I knew they were used by miners, but... And I guess I should have known, because there's more mem uh, RAM power in a GPU 
than in the base PC. Ounce for ounce. But at the same time, it's just like, oh my god. That's why you can't get a 1080 graphics card. Everyone's snatching them up for other things. It's like, no, they're supposed to be for high-end gaming. <laughs> Leave my graphics cards alone. Which, I don't have a 1080, I have a 1060. But, I'm satisfied with a 1060. Um, that's a good question. The answer's a little complicated. So, technically, no. There is a gigantic asterisk next to that answer. Your ability to get um, loot off a mob is going to be contingent upon your looter skill. If your looter skill is not high enough for the mob you're hunting, it doesn't matter how, what level your combat skills are, you're going to get crap for loot off of it. They did that in order to um, comply better with Sweden's non-gambling rules. And so, you really need to focus on driving those three major looter skills, which are... It's like I was standing on top of it, dude. Is it this one? Oh, where is it? Maybe it's a general. It's not defense. It's not combat. Oh, you know what it is? I'm thinking in raw skills. Uh, it might actually be in gathering. Here it is. So skinning for animals, scourging for mutants, and then reclaiming for robots. Which then drive your looter professions. Here are the animal looter, mutant looter, and robot looter. The higher these are, the better your returns on any mob are going to be. And there are going to be some that are far more... Um, the as you get up to them, they're going to have the bigger loot pools, which, of course, you're going to use more ped to down them. And, of course, there's a universal Calypso tax, but there it is. Good. The, the fun's the important part, because, you know, it's, it's a game. That's what you're supposed to be doing, is having fun playing it. Now, the, as much as I hate to say this, the fastest way to make a small fortune in Entropia Universe is to start with a large one. You know, it's going to turn into a small one eventually. <laughs> but unless you're unless you're running an own land area, or if you are heavily invested in deeds like uh, War Spade is, you know, play to play. Play to play, not to make a profit. And hey, eventually, you could get to the point where you are regularly making a profit. And if you do, that's awesome. But don't expect it. I'm trying to think... I. I don't remember if the looter skills came out shortly after I started or shortly before. Uh, because I came to the game just as they were releasing Loot 2.0. Or maybe slightly thereafter. And I know the looter skills were rolled out sometime in that time period. I mean, everyone groused about Loot 2.0, and it was because Mindark had to implement the whole skill-based looting as opposed to the more random looting 
because Sweden was like, eh, this looks like a casino to me, Mindark. And Mindark was like, no, 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 no. Um, and so, yeah, the when they rolled out the looter skills, everyone didn't, like, scale them to based on the person's skill points or anything like that. They just rolled in at zero for everybody. And so people who were used to hunting really high-level mobs who had no looter skill now because before it wasn't reliant on a looter skill lost a bunch uh, because they didn't go back and hunt the lower-level mobs to grind out that skill. Now, some of them did have... I can't say that's 100% that's accurate. But they didn't have were these skills here. The reclaiming, the scourging, and the skinning. The looter professions are not just dependent on those skills, but they're heavily influenced by those skills. They're also influenced by things like perception. So I know that like an Uber would have had a much higher looter profession than someone like me, even right off the block. However, because they didn't have those three skills because they had just been created, they definitely suffered for a while when they made up that gap. Yeah, so Alex, here's my recommendation and here's what I do. And I actually stole this idea from Lore Spade, so I'm, I'm going to give him credit for it. When you're doing depot, buy universal ammo. Straight up. Just buy universal ammo. Don't do straight deposits. Buy universal ammo. Now, there are going to be some exceptions to this when you get into like your, your mayhems. Because mobs only drop shrapnel. And you might have to contribute raw, raw cash for repairs. Although, they usually drop enough to where you can... I don't necessarily advocate this because you lose a lot doing it, but you can TT some of your shrapnel if you have to. Um, but when you get the loot, you sell the loot for markup, and then you use the money you get from that to buy your deeds or your shares. And so by that, by doing that, you have the, you get the rate of return, you get the investment you want, and you get the gameplay time. So it's win, win, win. And that's pretty much how I've played since the beginning. Oh, I think one of my guns sold. Nope, my animal muscle oil sold. Yeah, if anyone needs an LBP-1, I'm selling two of them on the auction house, reasonably priced. They're definitely low-level guns, but they're a good way to get into pistols. Uh, especially BLP ones. Speaking of which, oh good, I've got enough to throw on the auction house. That's the one thing, if, when you do auction house, if you're a low level, it's a lot tougher, but you, there's usually people who are willing to buy the mats off of you. You'll get a lower markup, but at the same time, you'll have you'll get access to ped. Um, in order to auction things effectively, you really need to have at least 50 ped worth of, um, of the item, and generally no more than 200 ped. And you sell it as close to the market value as you can. I would always encourage people to try to nudge it up a little bit for obvious reasons. But undercutting is something that people do. Because that's competition. And this is a game where market domination is really, really difficult. When you're gathering, for gathering that. It's not for crafting. And so, um, if you're lower level, try to find a trader who will buy your mats off of you for a reasonable price, you know, above TT value, and then use that money until you're at a point where 
your normal gameplay will get you more than 50 ped worth of that mat and then you sell it directly on the auction house. Now you might want to, you, you might still go to a reseller for it because sometimes that's the fastest way to unload it and then you don't have the auction fees and it's a guaranteed sale. So there's, there is that aspect of it. Like if I'm, let's take animal muscle oil as an example. We're going to throw the market values out there. So currently it's selling for, whoops, it's selling for 103.7. If I find someone who's trading it, I might only be able to sell it for 101 and a half. But the benefit is I don't have an auction fee, which on small amounts, that's gonna eat up a lot of that markup anyway. But the other side of that is that it's an immediate guaranteed sale. I don't have to put it up there and hope someone buys it because when you, if they don't buy it, you still lose the auction fee. Mindark still gets paid no matter what. So it's worth sacrificing a little of the raw possibility of markup for the guaranteed sale. Uh, auction house making money is cool. I do the undercut at times to sell quicker. Yup. Yeah, I would just be cautious because it's an easy way to crash the market, especially something that's low markup like animal muscle oil. And that's that's actually basically how the sweat market died. Because resellers were forcing were um, pretty much forcing sweaters, who are your free to play people, to keep selling at lower and lower rates. And they and I'm pretty sure it was fairly coordinated. I don't think they were acting independently. I'm pretty sure it was fairly coordinated it's because the, the resellers, when it comes to sweat, if if any group in this game has a cartel, it's the sweat resellers, hands down. And so now sweat goes for 90 peck per thousand. I'm, I'm seeing it start to come back up to 1.2 because uh, next island threw something out there where you need a shitload of sweat and then the you know, people who sweat mobs are like, uh, 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 move that price back up. Because now players will get it, will need the sweat for other things other than crafting. I think a smart player would probably spend some time at Club Royal sweating mobs and then smuggle it across to next island, which is extremely dangerous. And if you get shot down, there goes all of that hard work. But. If you can get to next island and you have all of those bottles, because I think the, I think it's like Arcadia, you have to have 10,000 bottles to do whatever the thing is. That's a lot of work. It took me a month to gather that much sweat. But if you can hop over and you're selling it for two, three ped per thousand, you're making bank. Yes, Mindark is the house, and the house does indeed always win. Now I want to play Fallout New Vegas again. Thanks, Alex. It's all your fault. Which I really, I hear there's some fan projects of, um, they're redeveloping Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas into the Fallout 4 engine, which let's be frank is a hell of a lot more stable than the Havoc engine ever was. I love the Havoc engine, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of good stuff that came out of it, but they did not make a stable Fallout game in that engine. I'm sorry. Like, Fallout 3 was great. Fallout New Vegas, God bless its divine soul, is awesome. I would I would still... I have to say Fallout New Vegas is hands down my favorite Fallout game. And I can play it over and over and over again. But it gets really tiring having the game crash behind the loading screen. There was a time when sweat was worth 10 ped per thousand. 
That's how Serial Overdrive made his uh, his tune worth five thousand U.S. dollars. Is he he literally ground it from sweat up? Back when the the markets were actually really good. Actually, sweating used to be a hell of a lot more complicated. And you could get interrupted, which you can today still. But it was it was nuts. It was a hell of a lot more complicated. Because you actually had to charge the ability up and then you had to activate the sweat skill. Because it was a mind force chip, essentially. And then later on they introduced the VSC1, which is, you know, a free device that never decays. Which I'm not bitching about. Not at all. You know, making the game a little more accessible is always good. I have played it in survival mode. I prefer to play it in survival mode. Um, actually, I think they call it... Yeah, it's either survival or hardcore or whatever they call it. But yes, I have played it on the hard one where you actually have to eat and drink and, um, you know... Repairing limbs doesn't happen just because you went to bed. Oh, son of a bitch. I wasn't paying attention. Come on. Ouch. Level 17 may be a little bit too much for me to tank without armor. Boy, he hits like a brick shithouse, doesn't he? Ow. That wasn't cool. Okay, we'll have to pay attention to that. Level 17 is kind of high on the chart. I mean, it's not a big deal if I've got ghost armor on, but I'm not wearing armor. I think that's the first time I've used an HDNA all year. <laughs> no, that's not true. I have used a couple, but I'm I'm swimming in the damn things. 248 HDNAs. Yeah, I have to agree. Um, well. Yeah, because you don't have to eat and drink in Fallout 4. It's not mandatory. You do in Fallout 76, which is basically... Um, basically multiplayer Fallout 4 in a different setting, for lack of a better term, especially now. Now that Wastelanders has come out, and they've put out the um, NPCs, actually. There are actual NPCs. I think that the NPCs have made for a better game. Instead of just robots and scorched. Um, at the same time, though, they're completely wrecking the PvP. But if you like Fallout... If you like the the whole notion of Fallout 4, but you want the survival aspect, give 76 a shot. Just make sure you get Fallout first. Honestly, there are times I wish that Entropia Universe had more survival aspects to it, like, you know, food. You pick up fruit off the ground, it doesn't do me any good, I have to feed it to my pets. I would love for them to implement, like, I want to pick up steak off these Kerberos. And then if I have an apartment, I should be able to barbecue them. And just have a buff food. I mean, you don't have to, like... It can be worth a TT value of zero. Right? Or it can just replace some of the loot when it drops. But have it provide a buff. You know, it doesn't even have to be one that, that increases the lootability. It could be, like, a, a speed buff. Or a regen buff. You know? Something that's... That's tangible. But at the same time, wouldn't it be cool to just, like, hang out at your... 
on your balcony at one of the, the apartments that like um I don't know Treasure Island the towers there you and your friends could all hang out and you're you're cooking steaks on the balcony and you're just chilling Okay. Before I accidentally weave a mob without looting it. <clears throat> Should probably have popped that skill pill earlier. My big thing is, I know it's because, I know it's because all of the teams that work on this game have, are small development teams. Like, I think Mindark only consists of 12 people. Like, that's the whole company. And they manage this huge platform. Or maybe it's 12 developers, but either way, it's not a big company. They don't have hundreds of people. They wouldn't be able to do it. Not the way they, they paid themselves. But I think that there's so much potential here that they just haven't utilized. And so I think that if, if, a, if a big market competitor does rise up, I think my Dark's going to be in trouble. And that really kind of hurts my heart. And I say this even though I'm backing one of these potential uh, competitors. You know, I, I do think that because of the differences between the two platforms, there is room for both of them. But it's already pretty obvious that the most prevalent group of people that are looking at the Virtuverse platform are Entropia players or former Entropia players. Because we love the real cash economy aspect. We love what we see going on there. But when I go to play that game as opposed to, which is the servers are off right now, but when I go to play that game as opposed to this one, I'm looking for a different experience. It's a much more active play style. Whereas this one's relatively passive. But either way, I want the opportunity to do things like hang out, use the platform as an opportunity to just chit chat, maybe throw a party, you know? And whenever you have a party, you have to have refreshments. They even banned beer on the planet. Can you believe that? My god. There's a whole quest chain about it. In fact, I've got the whole quest chain on video, so go look through some of my old content. I've got 160-ish Entropia Universe videos now. And those are just the ones I managed to get into the playlist. So who else is in here with us? I know we've got Kat and Kenrick and we've got Alex. There's six of you out there. Do me a favor, please, before you do anything else, but smash that like button. The more likes I get, the better my channel does in the algorithm, which will give me better exposure. So if you could please just be, be kind enough to smash the like button, or if you don't like what I'm putting out, hit the dislike button and just let me know why. You know? And then if you really like what I'm doing, please consider sharing out this video to your social media platforms because that right there actually overrides the algorithm because then they're seeing it directly from you. And if you do that, it's all of those actions are greatly appreciated. You know? It is, channels grow on no small part because of the viewers. And that's, that's fundamentally true. Because it's the support of the viewers, of, of all of you, that tell YouTube to continue to promote this content. It's all algorithmic. And then by sharing, 
you put me out to your friends, to your family, to see all of this. Say, oh, I wonder what this is. Oh, this is pretty neat. Hey, Matthew. Welcome to the manor. You're right, I do assume that you have social media. You know, I'll be honest, if it weren't for the fact that I use, like, um, like, I don't post hardly anything to Facebook that's not work-related because I'm, I'm a social media manager for my job, so not not including what I get paid for. I hardly ever post anything to Facebook, and, and Kat and Kenrick can both confirm this. Um, but what I do use it for is contact with all of the things I do. They all have Facebook pages, and that's all their primary contact method. And so I was, like, I considered deleting all of my social media, and then I realized I can't. This is how I talk to people. But no, I don't I don't post butt kiss to social media. So Matthew, I think you are new to our chat. Are you an EU player or are you checking it out? like I'm experiencing some lag there. Okay, good. It resolved itself. I've got an isolated laptop. You do find a lot of funny content, Cat. I got to admit. You find some really good stuff. Oh, are you doing the um, run into the high level mobs defense grind? I know that's really popular. So there's an area here in the game, for those of you who aren't familiar with the term. Um, Zykion was the capital of Calypso back before it was destroyed. Uh, that should be it, Zykion Citadel. Well, there's some level 200 plus... Ah, um, oh, crap. They're, they're the same mob that you get for Easter Mayhem. They're robots. They look like six scythes attached to a robot body. Um, they're basically death incarnate. And there's like these two level 250 ones there. And you just run into it over and over and over again. Yeah, the Mulsibers. <clears throat> oh, wow. You're already at that high level of a profession for evader. What's my evader profession at? 24. So, as, with that high of an evade skill, you should be able to pretty much hunt the, um, the Caudatergus around Icarus without getting touched. No need for armor, just go out there and dodge everything. See, that was a grind I didn't want any part of. It's like, nope, I'll just do it by hunting. And I know it's technically slower to get that profession up, but, oof. 284, thank you. I mean, unless your goal is to um, get the, uh, the skill implants, chip out that evade, rinse, repeat, which, I mean, you could make a lot of money doing that, I'm sure. It's just extreme. That, that's that's grind. That's that's almost grindier than sweating. 
Yeesh. So you got my respect. I'm sure those diminished returns are going to end up coming here pretty quick anyway. That evade is really high. Okay, so you're level 15 sniper hit. That's cool. Okay. That's respectable. That is very respectable. And yeah, you'd be able to evade a lot of shots with that much evade. Let's see, I don't even know combat. No, it'll be defensive. Yeah, my evade's at my evade's only thirty sixty six, so. That's, that's some seriously pumped up evade. I tried doing that, but by the time I got the Zyke on, I think I was already hitting those Demisha returns. Because I played for, oh hell, a year before I decided to do the, the Fort Fury run at least. And that's how I got the Zyke on Citadel, because I was chasing after beer. Hey man, I respect your grind. I absolutely do. One thirty two in shrap, one oh two in animal muscle oil. Have to throw that on the auction house once we get back. I was hoping to see some daylight during this run. Like we're we're hitting deep night now. The moons have gone down. Or no, they haven't. Well they never actually go down, but the the glow of the moons has gone down. It's beautiful starry sky. Like I live in the countryside, and it's hardly clear enough for me to see the stars like that, but that's mostly because it's always flipping cloudy. Like, even today, bright, sunshiny day, it was like 80-plus degrees when we were fighting. Now, cloud cover. Managed to mosey my way back toward Boreas. I wanna know what the hell that guy's shooting. Is that oh I, I wouldn't that's probably a BLP weapon. What are they packing? A Cochrane LR7. So, it's a laser rifle. This one's amped with the R Matrix L4B. Does respectable damage. It's not often I find one that, you know, there's a weapon out there that's not an R Matrix.
it's actually kind of nice to see weapons out there that aren't our matrixes. It means that there's more variety in the crafting scene. Speaking of crafting, I need to go pick up the last of those LB-35s that Warspade made for me. Speaking of which, if you're in the game and you're looking for weapons or armor, um, I would go check out Warspade's shop, see what he's got. His inventory, of course, changes from time to time. So people buy things and he crafts new things. But he is in Medusa Bazaar, second floor, shop one. So if you need to buy something, check out his shop before you buy it off the auction. Support a, support a YouTuber. Inventory. Yes, I know I tend to use the British pronunciation. Depending on the context, I will flip back and forth. Let's see. Ooh. Um, perception. Work on those looter skills. It's because. But yes, I, I do tend to pronounce it inventory, which is the British pronunciation. You will hear me call, say it invent, uh, inventory, often depending on context or you know how tired I am. At this point, it's it's kind of subconscious, and I will use them inter uh, both pronunciations interchangeably. Thank you. Yeah, that's cool. Um, interestingly, the reason I tend to use British pronunciation, actually I use a lot of British spelling too, is because I've watched a lot of Monty Python, and the BBC is my primary news source. Well, the BBC and Tim Pool. Um, so, when you're that, when it's all of that British content, you start to pick up on their mannerisms. Dawn comes to the dawn, and we've got about 15 minutes left. Ah. Although, to be fair, I've known live streamers that do like 24 hour live streams for charity, and I'm sure that by the time dawn comes. They are ready for bed. Because a lot of them, they'll start... And I don't know when most of them actually start. But I think they generally start in the mornings, you know, 8, 9 o'clock. And... So, a word of, word of advice if you're looking to become a disciple... And I'm I'm not opposed to becoming a to have to being a mentor to people. There's a, there's a caveat involved. One, message me about it first. Find out if I have the time and the opportunity to be able to mentor you. You know. Two, understand that I might be busy. 
You know, I'm not going to pick up a mentee while I'm on live stream. One, because the mentee doesn't know that I'm on live stream. And I do feel kind of bad for that player. I'm not trying to call them out. But it does make it harder because I'm not able to really respond to them because I prefer to be able to do that in a more private setting. Um, so whenever you're looking for a mentor, whether it's me or anyone else, you know, before asking to become a disciple, message them. Say, hey, are you mentoring people right now? Are you interested in taking someone on as a disciple? And, you know, a lot of them are going to say yes. And some of them might be like, look, I do have myself open for mentoring, but, you know, I'm my, my schedule just doesn't allow for it right now. And if they say that, then say thanks for letting me talk to you and move on and find someone else. I know mentoring in this game is not nearly as um, high contact as real life mentoring is, but still there's some, there's definitely some give and take in that relationship. And so just a little bit of work goes a long way toward making sure that you gel with your potential mentor. Is that still... They're still there. Obviously, that person is Afka and has been for a while. I wonder if they fell asleep. Because, um. Nemo, N Namo Killer, Namo Killer, you, you, you need to come pick up your corpse. I mean, look at you, you're a mess. Kind of fold it in back on yourself. That can't be comfortable. If, if he was dead, he'd ha if he weren't dead, he'd end up with back problems, that's for sure. actually going to start winding down here in a minute. Got about well, no, we got about 15 minutes left. We're good. So who else is in here with us? We've got 7 people. I mean, if you don't want to talk, that's fine. Just, you know, maybe just drop a hello. Gotta be careful not to. Oh, that person died. I wonder if they were trying to sweat that level six. You don't want to sweat a level six when you're solo. It's just bad juju. Come on. Damn it. Wait, I don't think she's sweating. I'll throw an apology out there anyway. Well, no, because he was wandering. If she was actively sweating him, then he'd have been attacking her. Yeah, no, she's she's probably Afka. Okay, we're good. Yeah, I 
I don't like stealing people's sweat targets because, in my opinion, it's a major dick move. Because there are players who will do it. They just won't care. They'll just, you know, kill mobs that are being swept by uh, free-to-play or sweaters. And it's just like, dude, not cool. You know, you don't like it when hunters steal your target. Don't be stealing people's sweat target. I hear a quad wing. Love Craft Academy. Didn't even know that was a society here. Not that I can say much. I'm a member of the Serial Society. Technically, I guess we're supposed to, like, slam, eat cereal all the time. Because a serial overdrive society. You know. But, uh. I actually don't eat cereal. So, for me, it's kind of ironic that that is number two, man. Hey, Silver Berserk. Thank you. I don't think we're going to be getting a Hoff um, fighting Kerberos. Actually, the only Hoff. I've gotten two Hoffs. One Hoff was just me, and that was fighting in Christmas Mayhem, my first Christmas Mayhem. And the second one I was party to was killing the Dinwich Horror, uh, the Dunwich, I think it's pronounced Dunwich Horror on Monria. I got exactly one strike in, and I got something like 10 pack. I'm like, that's Probably the saddest hop ever. <laughs> Funny as hell. It does, but that's why I pull with the pistol. Um, or with a rifle, or with mind force. Because as soon as you hit it, it's yours. You know? For the most part. But that will make it so other hunters won't try to steal your mob. And you don't need to, you know, do a lot of damage with it. You only need to hit it once or twice. Now, I try to balance out the skills that I'm gaining. So, like, some, like this one, I'm backing up as I shoot, doing the very traditional ranged hunting thing. For the bigger ones, I'll usually use the pistol to pull them, and I'll swap to my melee when they come into range. This one just happened to be so close, it wasn't worth it. You got an 800 pet hop off Kerberos? Okay, that's good to know. I think it would be awesome to get an 800 pet hop of a Kerberos. In fact, 800 pet is what I got in the uh, Merry Mayhem. It was like 860, something like that. The sad part is I was I was actually really bummed because I was not recording at the time. You know, stuff like that when you're a content creator, you want to get that shit on camera. That's 120 US dollars. That's nuts. Yeah, right. Jackpot indeed. Okay, I think we've pretty well picked the herd clean and we're coming to the end of our time.
We may as well just head back up to Boreas. I usually stream from 9 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. Uh, Eastern, currently it's daylight savings time. Eastern time. So, it's currently 10.25. So, we'll be here about another five minutes. But, uh... Silver Zerg, if, if you're around on Tuesday, I do live streams every Tuesday and Friday between 9 p.m. and 10.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, with rare exception that I'll... I, I, I think I've missed two since I've started live streaming regularly. Um, especially since the COVID has come because I can't go to events. Boomstick, I posted it in Lord Spade's Discord. Besides, don't you have me don't you have the notification bell hit? No pingy. Really? It's not letting you set it to all notifications? Come on, YouTube, what the hell? Yeah, no, we, uh, I think I touched on quite a few subjects today. Yeah, those eight tracks, or those eight tracks are no joke. They are definitely no joke. Yeah, YouTube certainly does have issues. Okay, well that's some interesting armor. What kind of armor is that? No, nope, no, nope, that one. Yeah, <laughs> default Paul. Martial. Okay, martial armor. That's some serious stuff. Check out those values. All right. Guys, it's come to that time of the evening again. I appreciate you all hanging out. Please do me a favor and hit the like button. 
And uh, please share this out to your social media so people can watch the replay. And uh, in the meantime, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Please like, share, and subscribe down below. We are on the road to 13 million subscribers, one subscription at a time. So make sure you subscribe. I really appreciate the support. It has been a great time. We'll see you in the next one Tuesday, 9 p.m. Eastern time. Make sure you're here. Looking forward to it.